Tell us what happened to you. Help <laughs> 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 Welcome to Rustling Castle. The Sinclair family have held the lands of Rustling since 1280. The first castle built on these lands can be dated to either the late 14th or early 15th century. The courtyard was entered via drawbridge over an artificial ditch when first constructed, a far cry from the amazing approach we see today. Today we only see a small portion of what would have been an imposing yet stunning castle with many room parts now clearly visible. This is little wonder due to harsh Scottish weather, various attacks and one too many fires through the ages. The location of the castle is also intriguing, overlooking the area known for the Battle of Rustling, where the Scots defeated the English in 1303. Surprisingly, we do have the restored East Range in perfect condition. It is entered through the richly carved doorway, dated 1622, initialed SWS for Sir William Sinclair, which gives access to the third floor. Janine Harvey, an Australian author, informed us on her website, Sisters of the Bruce, that she is coming to direct contact with one of the spirits of the castle. She tells us, It was dusk, gloomy as charcoal, and as damp and gritty as befits any ghost story. What did I see, you ask? A white lady, perhaps, drifting about, bemoaning the loss of her lover. Quite the opposite, in fact. Below me on the stairs, I caught a glimpse of something moving. It was no spectral figure, but as firm and solid seeming as any human. His shoulder length hair was straight and dark, and his outfit rough brown homespun. He passed a few steps below me and disappeared around the corner, down the stairwell. Did he see my gobsmacked look, or hear my sharp intake of breath? I think not but went on his way, going about his business, perhaps as he had done for hundreds of years.
You got your first name, surname? You got your first name, surname? The gypsies, um, King James V was in, and this common man guys he used to get rid of all this royal gear and wear common clothes and come out and live with the common man for months at a time so you could see how his people were living. And that's when he was down here that the, a fight broke out um, over Mary Sybil's death, and the, the person who actually did steal the item uh, finally confessed after Mary's ghost appeared in here mm -hmm. to them all. Dressed completely in white with piercing blue eyes. Right, okay. So that's who we're looking for in here. It's the spirit of Mary Sibbald here at all. I think it said go away. Yeah, yeah, it did sound like that a little bit. Yeah. It's the spirit of Mary Sibbald here at all. I think it said go away. Yeah, yeah, it did sound like that a little bit. It's Go away. Yeah, go away. Yeah. Oh. Go away. Go away in a Scottish accent. Yeah, go away. Yeah. Oh. Um. It's like a swear to you. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I swear to you. It's like a swear to you. Ah, yeah. I swear to you. Ah, yeah. I swear to you. Can you tell me what's the native oh. names of the people from Scotland? Can you tell me what's the native oh. names of the people from Scotland? Sorry, what's the name of the person who's walking away? Right. There you go. Yeah, I heard that. Sorry, what's the name of the person who's walking away? Basically, just a swept radio that the, ra the system sweeps across radio band, and that gives the spirits and entities uh, something to, like bits of speech and music and stuff. They make voices out of it, and it allows them. You can hear them talking. It'll, it's you can hear it. It's you can tell it's not just radio fragments, but they'll they'll address you by name. Sometimes they'll swear at you. <laughs> Spirits group. You just heard that perf something about a spirits group. Spirits group. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Who's the man? Yeah. Said it again. You sound like Jeanette. That's what it sounds like Jeanette. to me too. Heather. Oh, Jeanette. Oh my gosh. There's one that says, "My dad did this," and I do have a son on the other side, and he does talk to me sometimes. Yes. My father did this.
the? Or what the? session in here. I have not been back here in over a year. Balvear Castle is a traditional late medieval Scottish tower house. It's located in the Oakle Hills, around three miles south of Abernethy. The castle dates to around the year 1500 and was owned by Sir Andrew Murray. The Barclay family once held the lands and before the current build, most likely we would have had a previous Barclay Castle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to walk through into the actual castle area and first of all we're going to go into this little guard room here. Now you have to watch if you come here obviously in the spring summertime because we do get swallows who nest inside here and um, I've been caught out before, <laughs> quite a fright when they, they come past you. So as you can see it's just a nice little, nice little room. We have caught some audio in here before. Uh, nothing to blow your socks off, but still very significant at the same time. This is probably one of my favourite areas in here, and I'm just going to show you that. There you go. But it's this area here, this is where we caught the audio, which said, I'm sure it was King Billy. George. Did I just hear the name George? so much audio it's, it's easy to, to forget but it was definitely the name of the king that come through when we asked and we were, we were just sitting on the stairs here. Um, I really like this place. I've had personal experience here. Back in 2006 myself, Fiona Williamson and Stuart Mackey experienced something strange down at the car park. There was like a buzzing sound it made Stuart drop his bag um, we didn't know what happened, it was really weird and we've never got a rational explanation for what happened back at that time. Over 10 years on, still we have no idea what would cause an intense buzzing, as if being electrocuted between Stuart and I. As we see, even the power lines are a good part beyond the area where we stood. Additionally, we had problems unlocking the central locking on the car and minor electrical problems till we left the area. What was this strange phenomena?
inevitable that if you begin probing afterlife research, that you may just get through some data that will shock you when you least expect it. While conducting test sessions at the Royal Hotel in Dyser for an upcoming public meeting, such happened in front of my teammates who were watching the testing. We ran the new ITC IP box created by Mark Coltis, which in effect is a random noise generator. We were looking for coherence to be formed in the bit sounds and part words. In the last few weeks, unknown to anyone but me, I wrote down 10 phrases and words that if I heard through my audio, I knew it would be communication about my dad who passed away one year past March. The name he went by, Paddy, was one of these words. While asking for validation at the Royal Hotel, wanting words related to the building, my dad's name came out loud and clear, shortly followed by the phrase heart attack. I also continued to hear dad, which has produced itself three times in a 10 minute session. It's a reminder which, when you do these types of communication sessions, it may be nothing to do with the locations and their histories, but about the people present at the time. Okay, can you name this building? Dirt. Paddy. Paddy. That's my dad's name just come through. Did you hear Paddy coming through? Did you hear Paddy coming through? Yeah. That's twice in two days. I listened back. They might have sound like him. But... Hey guys. Hey guys. Who are we speaking to? Okay, can you name this building? Dirt. Hide it. That's my dad's name just come through. Dad. Please Your health. Oh, what? Good God. 
welcome to the thing from the desk. Okay. We need some validation. No. You have a check. Is the female oh. still in the area? Yeah. Maybe. And leave it. So you got it. We're going to tell the story, ready to offer.
voted one of Glasgow's most admired buildings. This iconic A-listed edifice has been restored in a £5.8 million project to provide a heritage centre and prestigious office accommodation. Welcome to Fairfield Heritage in Govan, Scotland. 100 years, that is how long Govan was to be centre of shipbuilding on the River Clyde in Scotland. The finest vessels, steamships and the most luxurious liners would grace the area from design to official launch. The activity at this location is very similar to the activity along the road at the Pierce Institute, a location we investigated extensively. Not only this, the locations are linked by the same historical characters, William Pierce being a prime example. Much like the Institute, this location has been subject to strange activity witnessed by staff and visitors alike. Lights turning on and off, ghostly figures said to have been witnessed floating through the corridors and rooms, and unexplained environmental changes such as temperature and static energy. In addition to this, our paranormal research and analysis team member, Nicola, has seen the shadow figure walking the corridor here. All the signs of possible paranormal activity, but can we communicate with it as a group and gain answers to the question, who haunts the building? Um, Ryan's just getting stuff set up. You know um, I heard, we both heard something move over beside the TV. Over um, the there's been nothing over, there's nothing over there at the moment. Um, um, Ryan's just getting stuff set up. You know um, I heard we both heard something move over beside the TV. We've got a communication through some of the tech here, and then we'll probably go quiet for five, ten minutes and just keep rotating. We'll just go over the floor and just see yeah. where it takes us. Um, sometimes when you're punched straight up the tech, you miss things in the room. Yeah. It's happening around as well, so we'll try and get it all in. So we're going to run... We're going to run Mark Cox's up first. Can you say yes? For sure. For the duck. It's her. Her what? Jim! Can you just slide the echo on it? Jim Shuck. Hello? I'm freezing. Okay, we need validation to start. E5. Friends. Friends. Okay, can you tell us who you are? 50. Opportunist. Okay, can you name uh, someone in the room here? Stop! Picture. Like it? That's a picture there. Oh god. Right, okay. Uh, okay. Listen, you give things like pictures. There's pictures on the walls here. Could be wrong. Even to do. What about the picture? Seventy. We decided to take a journey into the Highlands of Scotland, God's country, on the trail of our ancestors. 
Right through history, the lands have turned red with blood here, where many a skirmish has taken place. As we all know, wherever there has been such a bloodshed, emotion and historical significance, we also have reports of mysterious activity and many sightings of apparitions still seemingly attached to the land. We travel right through the central highlands seeking these mysteries. was built in the mid-16th century by the Forbes. In 1571, it was burned by their enemy, Adam Gordon, resulting in the deaths of Lady Forbes, her children and numerous others. After the Jacobite risings of the 18th century, it was rebuilt as a barracks and a detachment of government troops were stationed there. On the military road from Braemar Castle to Fort George Inverness, this was a main route. Paranormal screams have been reported here, specifically when reenactments of the 1571 atrocity is underway. Could this be Lady Margaret Forbes and the children who were brutally slain here? Perhaps a residual energy is fired up on these occasions, or even a long lost soul still residing here, unable to move on. Information suggests that the barracks room is particularly active. We conducted a few recording sessions here. Unfortunately, the castle is closed for the winter. We travelled deep into England to have a direct observation and research session at the infamous 30 East Drive, Pontefract, which sits in a historic market town in West Yorkshire. The location has gained a renewed interest in the last six years due to the well-received film When the Lights Went Out, which is based on the original activity experienced by the Pritchard family. Coincidentally, the film was released on my daughter's birthday back in 2012. The Pritchards moved into number 30 East Drive in August 1966. 
History then shows us that the activity started soon afterwards, with many weird situations arising here. Fine chalk-like substance was witnessed falling not from the ceiling, but from a level below head height. With this, the start of the infamous case had begun. Why, we do not know, but like many classic cases of poltergeist activity, it was centred around the children who were at the prime teenager stage of life, a common factor in such activity. Pools of water would mysteriously appear with efforts to mop up the water thwarted by more pools appearing on the floor. Green foam appearing from taps and toilet even after water was turned off. Lights being turned off and on, plants were thrown out of their pots landing on the stairs, cupboards would be shaken violently, photographs seemingly slashed with a sharp knife, and an endless levitation of objects including a solid oak sideboard. The energy was dubbed Mr. Nobody by the local press in 1968. The family, however, preferred to refer to it as Fred in an attempt to perhaps normalise the situation. Exorcisms were attempted here but failed miserably, often met by further actions such as walls seeping with holy water, faces slapped, people shoved down the stairs, and the energy would manifest hands from nowhere as if conducting the Christian songs. Whoever this energy was, it was not for moving, but neither was the family, who actually continued to live here for many years to come. Many amazing teams, researchers and even TV shows have accessed the property and conducted their own sessions and techniques here. One thing in common is the insistence that the location does still hold unseen energies, with the majority gaining validation of paranormal activity. What would be discovered when we use some legendary ITC devices here? We had an original Frank's box and a cultist box created by one of Frank's friends before he passed over to spirit, Mark Cultus. We would conduct communication sessions, solo vigils in the key areas, and even witness our very own Kyle Stewart become increasingly spooked when the door upstairs would open, handle actually moving, in front of him just before we set up our cameras and monitoring equipment. It knew we were here. It knew what we wanted to do. Now, would it give us anything at all to work with via our communication attempts? Let's see. Can you tell me either your real name or the name that you're known by, please? <laughs> talk into the microphone so people can hear you. Okay. 
Spirit, I'm going to knock. Could you do the same? And again, I'm going to knock. Could you do that, please? Could you do that, please? Could you do that, please? Could you use this? Did you say one? Did Fred speak to one of the ladies up there? He opened the door upstairs. Did that make sense to you? Keep hearing about this um this monk named Fred. This location has been a holy site for at least 10 centuries. Welcome our friends to Drill Hall in Anstruther Fife, formerly known as Anstruther Wester Parish Church and St Nicholas Church, 1243. We love history here at Scottish Paranormal and we love haunted history with locations that are deep in energies and the mysteries. We also feel drawn to such sites that have spanned many spiritual traditions due to the land they stand upon or the story surrounding them. St Adrian of May was a martyr saint of ancient Scotland. He is commemorated on December the 3rd, which incidentally is the exact date I typed this up during our post-investigation on December the 1st, 2018. According to legend, after being murdered by Vikings in 870, his body was alleged to be floated across from the Isle of May in a stone coffin. It landed right here at the location we are observing. This location is built upon a medieval graveyard, as are some local structures, and although reduced from its medieval area, the graveyard still contains much interest. 
the stone coffin of St. Adrian, tabletop tombs bearing carvings of a ship, and Masonic symbols between the pillars of Solomon's Temple. George Dishington lies buried here, one of the local family descended from the sister of King Robert the Bruce, the Outlaw King. A holy well was also found in the 19th century by the South Wall. We could speculate that the land sits on a ley line like many religious structures, which in turn often produce higher reports of paranormal activity. Our very own Greg Stewart would witness strange occurrences of batteries being drained from devices during a public talk here a few years ago. What would we experience when we monitored the atmosphere? Attempted some audio experiments using ITC techniques and sat quietly in this profoundly historical location. I think the batteries are draining in this, you know. This is this is exactly what happened to me when I was here a couple of years ago. Everything just what is that? everything is draining, Mark. Um, I heard that when I was here a couple of years ago. Everything just what is that? If you don't want to talk through the device just now, you could make a noise in the room here. And out in the stairs. Walls. For signal. Look yeah, at the thickness of the walls. We might not be. I mean, it's really hard to get a signal. But we could be getting stuff on this still. Are you on the stairs with us? Yeah, I'm sitting down there, it's kind of a smell of apples, it's kind of a smell of apples. Okay, we mean you no harm with you with respect. Temperature's dropping. You just want to know your story. It's absolutely cold, so I'm freezing. I know I'm freezing. It is cold, it is really cold. You're here with respect, we will not judge you. Hey Emma, hey Shari. Oh, so you get, you're picking up apples as well? Oh, Let me just apples. bring this like round to you. I thought it was more like fermented apples. burning apples, as if they're burning. Right, okay. I thought oh, it was more fermented. like fermented, like they were making cider or something. Or they were rotten. But it's chance that they would have made cider. That's how I would have described it. It was more like it was fermented apples, that's what it was. Can you say it, can you say it again? That was a man. Yeah. 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 Was There's something trying to communicate via yeah, the box. So it sounds like you're trying to come through the box. You hear it? Whoa. You okay? Just saw a ball of energy flying right past me. Right, okay. As you would with my own eyes. Right, excellent. Okay, Sean, I heard the woman as well. Can you tell us what happened to you? Oh. <laughs> that said killed her. Killed her. Did you hear that, guys? Yeah, yeah. It was something hard. It was killed her. Can you tell us what happened to you? Killed her. Oh. <laughs> Right, okay. As you would with my eyes. Right, excellent. Okay, Sean, I heard the woman as well. Can you tell us what happened to you? Killed her. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that said killed her. Killed her. Did you hear that, guys? Yeah, yeah. There was something hard that's killed her. Can you communicate with us? Okay. Please answer us. How many spirits are in here with us? And it was, it was 